This story is fascinating. Ryan Poles is a former offensive lineman. We know that he has a vision for how he wants this thing to go. We know that he wants smaller, more athletic, more versatile offensive linemen. Guys who can zone block, guys who can get out in space, guys who can play multiple positions. He is on the record with like his type. He's got a type. Tevin Jenkins is a mauler. He's huge. He's a refrigerator. Even if he doesn't have any facial features, according to Chris Tannehill. Do you guys have a skyscraper? No. Right. Don't, don't, well, refrigerators no, 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 don't no. have facial features either. So it wouldn't right. be he's a refrigerator, yeah. even though he doesn't have any facial features. That's, That's true. implying that refrigerators have facial features. It's, right. Again, first day he is back. so back, for, Danny. Yeah, he I, is. I'm he's here. so back. He's One never, an hour at least. He's never been more back. Don't put the facial features dumb thing on me. Oh, that on Speaks. Yeah, that's yeah. on Speaks. Yeah, right. I would never talk about a guy's personal appearance. I will only question everything else about his <laughs> essence <laughs> and okay. say that he's a bust without ever seeing tape. <laughs> of them right that's what i do you nailed it man yeah molly said it <laughs> yeah 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 you did nail it oh uh, <laughs> molly was a very astute observation yeah it, i got it, to see the guys this morning they said someone texted our show and said that you called <laughs> you called Devin jenkins a bust right after he was drafted it's like yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what i do <laughs> yeah yeah the, the day the show after you're like that guy stinks um but i got to admit like even with all of that on the fit and what ryan pole said he wanted and knowing that that isn't Tevin Jenkins. I'm still kind of surprised. Like this team. Maybe I'm alone here. But when I watched Tevin Jenkins last year. He looked pretty good. Now he missed the first 11 games. He was playing in meaningless football for an incompetent offensive coach in a terrible system for a bottom five offensive unit. But, like, if you watched Tevin Jenkins play, coming off back surgery in a rookie year with terrible circumstances around him, I didn't think he was bad. So maybe it is square peg, round hole. They do not believe that they can make it work. But this roster is so bad on the line that they must really be sure that they can't make it work because this is the exact type of thing that could come back and bite you. Like if you trade Tevin Jenkins for a sixth round pick, the sixth round pick is overwhelmingly likely not going to work. And Tevin Jenkins was a fairly universally regarded top 50 prospect who in a bunch of systems, I think based on what we saw, absolutely can work. Like it's in play that Tevin Jenkins is a starter in the NFL for the better part of the next decade, not for the Bears, and you're going to trade him for basically nothing. So there must be something to the rumblings about the attitude on Tevin Jenkins' side. I still think, like, I mean, as of an hour ago, I was prepared to come on the air and just be like, the guy's got to be hurt. Why would you not want to see him in pads? Why would you not want to give the highest pedigree offensive lineman on your damn team before the acquisition of, of Riley Reef a shot in pads? So now that they are apparently willing to trade him, you've got to reconsider that position. Like my, my guess is Tevin Jenkins doesn't play another game for the Bears, which is a hell of a draft pick by Ryan Pace. He drafted the hurt guy, said he could play left tackle. Then they said he could play right tackle, and he played six games mediocrely and then missed all of next camp and is going to be traded before year two. The city of Atlanta is going to love Tevin Jenkins as their starting left tackle. Yeah, probably be great. Not only drafted a hurt guy, drafted bad back guy. Right. You can't do that. No, man. no. Especially when you're big and right. fat. Yeah. It, it, there's even more pressure on your spinal cord. Danny, you, you know that about I, spinal cord pressure? I do. As a, as a tall, skinny guy with a bad right, back, right, right. It's, an, it's painful enough. I cannot imagine doing anything that would involve physical contact, having a bad back, and having 300-plus pounds on you. Pace saw his guy, zeroed in on it, had tunnel vision, went out and got him, right? Did it with Trubisky, 
did it with Cole Komet. Like, there was enough stories of how he, like, approached the draft process where he didn't really seem to have the biggest board and cast the widest net. He, like, had his guys, he had his types, he went out and he got them, and he erred on the side of aggression, right? Way more trade-ups than trade-downs, that sort of thing. So maybe to do the job, you need to have a decent amount of stubbornness or arrogance and, like, conviction of belief. But, man, Riley Reef is 33 years old. Tackles an offensive lineman that you sign in late July are not salvation pieces. They are bandages. Tevin Jenkins absolutely could still be a building block piece. Unless he is really hurt. So like, this is the thing that now is confusing to me. If they're trying to trade him, he needs to play. Who's trading for the guy with the back surgery who played six games that the new regime doesn't like uh, and who is also hurt? I know a guy. <laughs> Ryan Bates in Atlanta? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, we talked about this last week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lock. Can we, can we bet on that at any of our apps here <laughs> where yeah, he winds up? Yeah. I know it's a, it's, a decent, it's a decent option. Mitch traded for you from Kansas City. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> he knew about your, your medical history. Yeah, he's zeroed worked in. out here. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, for now. Uh, no, it's working out nice. I, I, I think the – I just, I'm very surprised that this is how it's going down with Ryan Poles. Like I, because we all agree that you're supposed to tailor your scheme to your personnel. How many times did we say that about Matt Nagy – and Justin Fields, and Mitch Trubisky. That was like the most common belief. And I know that a right tackle, obviously, is not the same as a quarterback, but they don't have any talent on the offensive line. Like, if you're only going to get a sixth-round pick or a fifth-round pick, right? Let's say it's fifth, sixth, seventh-round pick, a lottery ticket. You have to be so sure that you're right, that he can't fit to your system or that you shouldn't want to bend your system a little bit to fit this pedigree of talent. And how could you possibly know that when you've never seen the dude practice in pads? They've never seen him in pads one time. OTAs, mini camp, training camp, he has not been in pads for Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus once. So, bad attitude, immature. All right. This is a risky one. This is a very, very risky move by the new Bears GM. And I'm with you, Tanny. Like, I have to, like, begrudgingly admire the stubbornness. Well, it is kind of scary, though, because if they are so sure that they don't want this guy, this second-round pick, could have been a first-round pick, a guy who we saw on tape make his debut against the Packers on a primetime game and hold his own and have that little bit of nasty that we were looking for. Yeah. We talked about it after. If they're so sure about that, what if they're like so sure that they don't think Justin Fields is the guy, a quarterback? Well, yeah, man. But And, and that is what I was saying with the doomsday scenario the day after the draft when they drafted Brisker and Gordon. And I'm thrilled that the early reports on both from training camp have been good. And we'll have our Bears training camp report today at 5 o'clock with, with Mark Grody. But if you potentially are going to be so bad that you're going to have a top five pick in next year's draft, and you are not doing anything to really support Justin Fields this year, are you going to be able to do a fair evaluation of him? And whenever I say this, people are like, no, they're committed to him for next year. Okay. I hope they are, because I think Justin Fields can be special. I think that they absolutely should be committed to Justin Fields and building around him, but they're not really building around him. Fifth, sixth, seventh round offensive linemen to pair up with Cody Whitehair and Lucas Patrick once he gets back from the injury and old, injured, unemployed until recently, Riley Reef. Like, Riley Reef might be this year's Jason Peters. Well, I mean, 
We signed him. When I saw that contract that he got $10 million guaranteed, I was like, oh, my God, he's their left tackle. Like, they, they signed a starting tackle in late July again.